I'm Ellis Cohen at Siemens Research and Technology Laboratories. We're going to demonstrate our tiled window manager, which runs Android applications inside a sun window. We feel that overlapping windows do not make the best use of screen space. The screen can get messy and cluttered. You can lose windows, and worst of all, you can hide the contents of a window when you cover it up. Part of a window might remain visible, but what's important might be obscured. Is that useful? For example, on the left is an editor window. At the bottom right, a window contains information pertinent to the editing session. We want to enlarge the editing window so that the lines don't wrap and so that we can edit more usefully. But gosh, horrors when we do! The information that we need has been covered up. That just doesn't happen if the windows are tiled. Here we are in the RTL Tiled Window Manager. Once again, at the left is an editor window. At the bottom right, a window contains information pertinent to the editing session. Now look what happens when we enlarge the editor window. The window on the bottom right shrunk. The application, an H19 emulator, was notified and asked to redraw the contents of the window. As a result, the useful information is still visible. Instead of simply shrinking the top two windows, there was space to move them to the right. So we did. In an overlapping window system, the windows would have to have been manually moved. In our system, User settable options control such automatic features. Now, let's shrink the editor window back to its original size. Look, the bottom right window grew. That's because every window has a desired size, the last size to which it was manually set. As we've seen, a window can automatically be shrunk below its desired size when the space is needed for another window but the moment that space is available again, it returns to its desired size. We can also set the minimum size of a window, and that's what we'll do now to the window on the bottom right. Now look what happens when we try to enlarge the editor window. The window closed and was iconized. That's because if it would have remained open, it would have to have been shrunk below its minimum size. By double clicking on the icon, it opens at its previous location and the editor window now shrinks to make room for it. We could prevent the window from closing automatically by setting a window option. The window menu has associated a list of options. These prevent the window from being closed, from changing its width or height, or from being moved automatically. Right now, we'll prevent the window from being closed. Now, if we try to enlarge the editor window, the flashing beep tells us that we can't, and we have to cancel the operation. Now, we'll allow the window to close again. All right, another automatic feature prevents windows from being closed unnecessarily. Let's enlarge the bottom right window by pulling up its top edge. Notice that the window was enlarged, but towards the bottom, not towards the top. That way, we didn't have to disturb the window above it. As long as there's space available in the bottom of the window, we'll enlarge in that direction instead. Okay, for something completely different, it's easy to move windows in our system. Let's move the top right window to the bottom of the screen. The window outline helps the user determine the exact window placement. As after we move the window, the window above it shrank to make space available for it. We can also resize a window while we move it. We'll move this window up to the top now the outline box determines the location and size of the window. Notice if you did that the bottom right window enlarged back to its desired size. Finally, 
we can move a window to an approximate location and let the window manager determine the best place for it. We'll move the top right window near the center of the screen, in between these two windows, approximately. Notice some interesting things. The editor window shrank upwards to make space. The H19 emulator window shrank downwards. And this window, instead of being placed at the center, was shifted to the left a little bit so that we didn't have to disturb this window over on the right. If we close this window explicitly now, the other windows grow back to their desired size. Okay, let's go up to the icon for the window that we just closed and click to open it. As we do it, you'll notice that our window placement algorithm generally reopens a window at its previous location. But we have an option set which tells it if you can find space to open the window without disturbing other windows, put it there instead. Previously, the window was in between the Emacs editor window and the H19 window, and they would shrink if we opened it exactly at the old location. Let's see what happens. Instead of doing that, we opened it below and to the left of these windows so that we didn't have to disturb them. Now, let's close the window and this time when we open it, we'll do it manually and determine both the size and location of the window. We'll put it over here on the top right of the screen. In an overlapping window system, a user sometimes enlarges a window to really work in it. And this might completely cover other windows. When the user is finished working in that window, the user can shrink it and that uncovers the other windows and we're back to the previous screen configuration. Now, it looks like that might be difficult to do in a tiled window system. After all, when you make a window very large in a tiled window system, all the windows in the way would have to close. Well, we've solved this temporary enlargement problem with our zoom and unzoom features. We're going to zoom the editor window using the zoom gadget in the upper left-hand corner of the window the zoom size of a window can be set using a profile or explicitly set by the user. The editor window in this case has been set to zoom full screen. Notice the icons for all the closed windows. Now, we could work in this window, and when we're finished working in the editor window, we can click the zoom gadget again to unzoom the window. As you notice, this automatically repopulates the screen by reopening each of the closed windows at their previous size and location. Now, there is a lot of unused space on the screen. Some users like it that way. Others like their windows to make the best use of the available space. We support that by prorating, that is, by allocating space to windows which are on the screen. The main menu contains a prorating entry. That's used for one-time prorating. Or the user can turn on automatic prorating so that prorating is performed after each window operation. That's what we're going to do now. Every time we change the windows, prorating will automatically use the available space. For example, I'm going to take this window and I'm going to move it to the left slightly. That's going to open some space because the editor window to its left is going to have to shrink. That space will be taken up by this window also enlarging to its left. Let's see that happen. Now, I'll pull this window down a little bit. There's a hole. We don't always use the available space because sometimes it just can't be used.